Hello, Periscopers. I'm Crystal Wright. I get people unstuck, and you are on my list of things to do. Let's get this thing adjusted just a little bit better. Can everyone see me? So today, I was sitting in my chair, and I'm actually sitting in my very special space in my house, in my bedroom, and I want to show it to you. This is where I get my best ideas. This is where God downloads all the good stuff. Hi, everyone. How are you? And this is where I do all my reading, and I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to pull this phone. Double. It's going to flip the camera around, and what you're going to see is my space here are my books there's my bible notes a glass of red wine don't forget the red wine and there on the floor are even more books and over here on the table where the lamp is and i've set up my little lighting thing is just you have no idea how many me you have no idea how many notes i take in a day and how many post-it notes i have sitting all around the house but today my topic is phone etiquette life lessons to help you close the deal i got to thinking about it believe it or not when i was reading uh i think it was second kings and i will get to that part but let's just focus on phone etiquette how many of you find it impossible to understand why you can't get a call back let me see some hands let me see who has problems getting on the phone, either because you're uncomfortable on the phone, you forget what you're going to say on the phone, you start stumbling on the phone, um, any of those kinds of things, or you just make all these phone calls and nobody calls you back. Well, I real, you know, I'm, my background is that I was an account executive with Xerox. I was an account executive with Xerox for five years, and one of the things that we had to do all the time was call people on the phone. So there are clearly lessons on how to do it. And since my goal is to empower freelance artists to become stylepreneurs, artists who are as serious about their business as they are about their art, I thought that I would come up with just three points because I don't want to keep you on the phone. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start my timer here and I put it at 12 minutes. So we're not going to be here on, on here all day and all night. But so these are the three things we're going to cover. Number one, the appropriate way to leave a message. Number two, you can't take notes without a pen and paper. And number three, don't put me on hold. So let's go over how these three things play into your life. Now, remember as we go through, invite other people to, uh, you know, invite your friends and followers to, um, to join us. You swipe up for Android. You swipe to the right for iPhone. I'm learning these lessons, you guys. Um, and so here's number one, the appropriate way to leave a message. Number one, you need to tell people who you are, you need to tell them what you want, and you need to tell them when you're going to call back. Did you guys get what I just said? You need to tell them when you are going to call back if you don't get them on the phone. It is not about you leaving a message for me to tell me to call you back when you want something from me, okay? Um, I get messages from people and the message will be, hi, this is Denise. Uh, could you please give me a call back at 323-555-1212? <laughs> could I please give you a call back? I don't even know you. Denise, let me tell you what I tell people in my PYP workshops. You cannot just be a first name until your first name is Oprah. When your first name is Oprah, you could go around saying, hi, I'm Oprah. And everybody goes, oh my God, it's Oprah. But when you say, hi, it's Denise. I'm like, Denise who? Denise what? Denise, what do you want? So the first lesson is you have to tell people who you are. You have to tell them what you want. 
and you have to tell them when you are going to call back. Hi, this is Crystal. I am an author and a motivational speaker. I would like to talk to you about speaking at your school. And I will give you a call back on Thursday between 3 and 5 p.m. I don't expect that busy person that is the president of the school to call me back when they don't really even know who I am. Another thing you can do, if you're a makeup artist or a hairstylist, you can fashion stylist, you can say, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a makeup artist, I am, um, I'm an executive assistant, whatever it is you are, tell them who you are, what you want, when you're gonna call back. Now, I realize a lot of times people don't wanna say who they are because they don't think they're important enough to get a call back. Well, guess what, sometimes that's true. Number two, you have to call back consistently. And every time you call back, you always leave a message. You always tell them the same things. And you always follow up with a call. When you follow up, say, hey, this is Crystal. I left you a message a couple of days ago and said I would call back. Follow me. That was Rashida. Rashida, get on the call. <laughs> get on Periscope. Okay. So... Don't be vague and unspecific. If you're calling me and you want something from me, be specific about it. Write it down on a piece of paper before you call me on the phone. If you have to read it, practice it in front of your mirror. Like I practiced my introduction tonight when I said, hello, Periscopers, I'm Crystal Wright. I get people unstuck and you are on my list of things to do. Do you think that comes naturally? That does not come naturally. Okay, so that was number one. Number one was the appropriate way to leave a message. Number two, you can't take notes without a pen and paper. There is nothing more infuriating to me than somebody who calls me up on the phone. My time is valuable. They call me up on the phone. They... I give them five to 10 minutes of my time and I discover that they are not paying attention when I say to them something like, um, uh, so the website is www.makeupparentstyling.com and they say, oh, hold on a second. Can you hold on a second while I get uh, something to write with? Seriously, are you kidding? I get paid $175 an hour to answer these questions. And I was feeling good today when you called. So I figured I would sit on the phone with you and give you some answers. And you just told me you needed to put me on hold so you could go and get a paper and pencil. I don't think so. And I'll tell you something. If you're an artist out there right now trying to get an assisting job with a key artist and you get a Sam Fine on the phone or Rennie Vasquez on the phone or you get fashion stylist Derek Lee on the phone or you get uh, a CEO on the phone and you have to say to them, can you hold on while I get a pencil and paper? What does that say about you? Number one, you didn't think you were going to get what you were calling for in the first place. And number two, you just showed me how little I matter by not having a pencil paper ready to take down the important information that I'm about to give you. So that's my other pet peeve. And the appropriate action is to get prepared. Be ready to get what you want. Sometimes you're not getting what you want because you're not prepared in the first place. That's number two. Number three, do not call me on the phone and then put me on hold. Put Mookie on hold if he's calling while you're talking to me. Okay, put your cousin on hold, put everybody else on hold, but do not put me on hold and make me wait when you need something from me. The other thing is, that's what call waiting is for, isn't it? That is why we have call waiting. So you can call somebody back. Listen, if you're calling somebody important and they don't know you and you need something from them, they are going to, you are only going to be with them. You're only going to be on the phone with them for five or 10 minutes anyway. Don't put them on hold. And the other thing is this, back to getting prepared, get your kids settled. 
Get them settled before you pick up the phone. Turn the television down. Turn the radio off. Get yourself set up at a table. Get a pencil and paper and be prepared to have something positive happen. You know, you're not the important part. You're not the most important person when you're making the phone call to get something else. And that brings me back to uh, number one, because this is what inspired me in the first place. So I'm reading. Do I have the right, my reading glasses on? So I'm reading Second Kings chapter 14. And um, in verse seven, it talks about a king defeating the Edomites. Then it talks about afterward, he sent his messengers to the other kings with a challenge. The challenge was, come meet me face to face. Now, first of all, it's disrespectful to say that to someone that you need to get something from. You're going to tell them what to do. Um, and what makes you do it, of course, is your ego. Verse 9 says, the king of Israel said, a thistle, small person, sent a message to a cedar, big person, an order, the, oh, okay, wait a minute, let me get it right now. So the, the king of Israel said, you sent a thistle, sent a message to a cedar. That means a small person sent a message to a big person and, and actually gave them an order telling them what to do, which is come meet me face to face. The king says to him, you defeated an enemy. Now you've gotten arrogant. How many of us have gotten a great job and now we think we're the king of the hill? Okay. Um, the things that get under my skin, when someone I don't know who wants something from me leaves a message instructing me and telling me what to do. That is the thistle telling the cedar what to do. Get your priorities in order, okay? Become a good listener and be a little humble. It's okay. You know, one of my, you know, when you sit around and you look at people like Sam Fine and you wonder why he's so successful, I will never forget Sam saying, I am a servant leader. That's why if I'm going to do a celebrity's hair and makeup, I don't think twice about calling them on the phone and asking them if they would like me to bring them a latte from Starbucks. Think about that for a second when you're dealing with people who are above you. And the reason I say it is in the simplest thing like the phone call and telling me to call you back. It's a very small thing, but it's really a very big thing that can get you in trouble long term. So that's what I wanted to share with you this evening from my little space. And uh, I have a minute and 14 seconds before I'm going to get off of here. Does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask me about uh, leaving messages or, um, you know, calling back, making phone calls, anything? No? Well, I hope that this was a good lesson for you. I hope you enjoyed the call. Um, the topic again was phone etiquette, life lessons to help you succeed in closing the deal. I'm Crystal Wright and I'm signing off. Bye now. Oh, that was great. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Okay. I just don't want to keep you guys so long all the time. It gets boring. So now let me figure out how to stop the broadcast.